Welcome to Buzz Around the Globe. Another island is in the eye of storm. And this time it is Kachathivu, which is part of Sri Lanka. Kachathivu is a 285 acre island in the Park Strait between India and Sri Lanka. It is uninhabited, meaning no one lives there, which is quite explainable by its size and lack of fresh water availability. It is only 1.6 kilometers long and slightly more than 300 meters wide at its widest point. It is located northeast of Rameshwaram, around 33 kilometers from India's coast. And it is located 62 kilometers southwest of Jaffna on Sri Lanka's northern point and 24 kilometers from the inhabited Delft island of Sri Lanka. Here's a breakdown of its history and how it became part of Sri Lanka. Let's first begin with what are the historical claims regarding this tiny but much fought over island. Pre-independence, the island changed ownership between India and Sri Lanka. Under the British rule, the island fell under the Madras presidency. Both India and Sri Lanka claimed Kachathivu after independence leading to a dispute about fishing rights in the surrounding waters. In 1974, the two governments decided to settle the boundary on the waters under an agreement on 26th and 28th June 1974. This is the text of the Indo-Sri Lankan Maritime Agreement as accessed from UN archives. It was signed by then Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and then recognized Sri Lanka's sovereignty over the Kacha Thiu. This aimed to settle maritime boundaries in the Park Strait. Now, the Indian government at the time considered the island to have little strategic value and Prime Minister Gandhi believed ceding the island would improve relations with Sri Lanka. Although the decision to cede Kacha Thiu faced criticism in India, particularly in Tamil Nadu where fishermen traditionally use the fishing grounds around the island. Indian government went ahead and signed the agreement. A subsequent agreement in 1976 restricted fishermen from each country from entering the other's exclusive economic zones. Earlier, the Article 6 allowed it. But later, after this agreement, it was banned. Here's a look at the exclusive economic zones of both the countries. And as we zoom into the border between the two countries, we realize that the tiny island is out of India's fear of exclusive economic zone. But the historic claims on the waters have ensured that Indian fishermen keep straying or intentionally head to the area for fishing. In fact, the successive state governments have argued India had stronger historical claims and that the island held importance for Indian fishermen and thus the central government's decision was against their interest. But the central government, no matter under which party, has never changed their stance on the fact that Kacha Thivu remains part of Sri Lanka. Now that the Prime Minister has mentioned it in his speech, one will naturally wonder if India will be raising a dispute with Sri Lanka in this regard or not. While state governments may be guided by the interests of their own people, Central governments have to balance diplomacy and good relations, especially with their neighbours in such cases. As Sri Lanka slips away from India's circle of friendship and becomes closer to China, is India looking at Sri Lanka as a lost cause? Is that the reason why the Prime Minister is tom-toming the island and its disputed legacy to target the opposition without a concern for its impact on the relations with Sri Lanka? Do tell us what you think about this video in the comment section and for more news updates, subscribe to India Today.